Neat. All right. So I'm a sophomore. This is graph-based patrol techniques. I'm Ryan Gibson. This is a uh, project from the Serious Games course, Comp 585H, taught by Dr. Krasevsky. And essentially, the problem that we're trying to resolve is that in most stealth games, games in which uh, the player has to navigate some environment, complete a list of objectives without being detected, uh, most just have the enemies following a very simple behavior tree. Just going through a set of predefined points, predefined paths, and traversing along these paths. And there are some simple chase and uh, search algorithms where you chase the player if you can see them, and if, once you lose sight, you start searching the environment. And it's just not, not ideal, essentially. On the player's end, it's really easy to recognize, really easy to play around. The developer's end, it's tedious to place all these points, to place all these paths. And it's not even feasible in some domains, notably randomly generated and procedurally generated areas. So what we want to do is we want to propose better techniques, but we need to test them in some manner. So what we've done is we've created a minimal stealth game. We have this map. We've got a player. We've got enemies. Player's a white cube. Enemies are a red capsule. They have a white side that uh, shows which direction they're facing. And so essentially, the player starts here. The enemies will patrol around here. The player's goal is to pick up these yellow blocks without being caught, essentially. And just for the sake of completeness, the search chase algorithm is just when the enemy can see the player, navigate to that position. Once you lose sight, navigate to the last known position and look in the direction of last known movement. And then there's some glancing animation, essentially, before returning back to the patrol technique. And to evaluate the various techniques, oh, of course, and this is the patrol technique. It's a set of predefined points. Each point has an associated direction. And I suppose it would be useful to full screen these. Yeah. All right. So, uh, and they've got a pre predefined points, predefined direction, and at time intervals, they'll go to another direction or go to another point and proceed in this manner. And uh, well, that's lovely. Okay. So, and then we need a way to evaluate these essentially. So, we've created a player AI that we can run against these uh, these techniques and see how it performs. And what this AI does is it determines paths to all the points all the pickups, and along these paths it'll sample points. For each point it will determine the distance from that point to enemies, and if that point can be seen by any enemy. In which case, if it's too close to a nearby enemy, or if it can be seen, that path is declared unsafe, and it will go down another path. And if there are no paths that are safe, it will attempt to take a step that maximizes distance from all the enemies. So it essentially proceeds along or proceeds to the nearest pickup that is safe to pick up and otherwise will attempt to run away from enemies and here's a video of this in action you'll see that well it will do precisely as i described essentially the white pluses indicate the points that we're sampling um, you'll see up here there will be a closer path that it will not take because it is seen by an enemy and then in a few seconds, we'll see that the evasion, essentially. At this point, this enemy spots the player. And once it picks up that item, the only remaining path is declared unsafe, and it takes steps to avoid the enemy. And you get this sort of interesting hiding behavior through the simple two rules that I described. It's really quite, quite interesting. And of course, because of the last thing, it wins. And these are the results, essentially, of running 100 iterations. It wins about one in every four games and picks up about 3.6 items on average. So essentially, we want more difficult techniques. So we're going to want to bring the mean score down. We're going to want to bring the, mean, the, the win rate down. And all the remaining techniques are going to be focused on this heat map idea. We overlay a grid graph on the walkable areas of the game, the nav mesh, essentially. And we're going to, going to encode how recently these areas have been patrolled, essentially. So each node is assigned a value. They increase with time. When an area is patrolled, they decrease. And in this manner, when we need a new patrol point, we can grab the greatest value from the heat map and break ties randomly if we need to. There's a threshold applied so that stuff doesn't get too unwieldy. So essentially, the easiest way to do this, most trivial way, is just to do distance. Uh, though the results are exaggerated here for visualization purposes, but that's fine. So you just 
decrease values based on distance from the enemies. And the look direction is determined by the longest line of sight. You ray cast out, whichever one gives the longest beam, you look in that direction. These flashes are just so to claim an area. Once an enemy claims a new patrol point, it, the heat map behaves as if they were standing there for a few seconds so that we don't get uh, multiple enemies patrolling to the same location, essentially. And immediately, this behaves quite a bit, quite a bit better than the uh, patrol method. Brings the mean score down a decent amount, about 0.2. Win rate gets nearly halved, though, which is quite, quite good, actually. But of course, distance might not be the most natural way to do this, right? I wouldn't say that I'm patrolling an area simply by being near it if it's around a corner or something. So we have augmented it to do line of sight. And this is shown here. Oh, and of course, now look direction is also in the theme of line of sight. Rather than looking in the longest beam, you determine which direction will give you the most valuable swath that you can see. So which direction allows you to see nodes with the greatest sum value. And this is what that looks like on the heat map. Cool. And so essentially, it lowers the values as with line of sight rather than distance. Pretty straightforward. And this does very slightly better, if you can say that. The win rate doesn't actually improve that much, but the mean score does decrease somewhat. And so we want to break this down or bring these down even further. So what we want to do is add a reaction to the heat map. So this, this patrol technique, right? It, uh, it's searching for the player. And if you've seen the player, it would make sense to ignore the rest of the heat map and just increase around the player. Because you want to bring all the enemies closer to the player at that point. And so this is what it looks like. I've brought the player into the Let's full screen this. Brought the player into the sight of an enemy. It locally increases the heat map, and it brings the other guys, the other enemy characters, closer. And essentially, you'd think this would generally cause the player to be caught. That, that's the hope, at least. But it doesn't. It doesn't at all, actually. It does quite the opposite. Uh, look at those. It doesn't do well, actually. <laughs> mean score uh, actually increases, and so does the win rate. And it's really neat. You check out gra uh, bars at 1 and 2, nearly equivalent. But there's this huge chunk taken off of 3 and kind of dispersed among values 4 to 6, right? And the intuition behind this is that if the player, this player, can evade this area, the rest of the map is free. So. If you can get out of this area, all of the patrols are brought to that location, and you can go pick up the other items at will. And the reason why this is at three, intuitively, is that once you've picked up three items, you have as many items remaining as you do enemy characters. And so this is generally when you start encountering enemies, since this player AI and most humans uh, go towards the safest pickups at first, so the remaining ones are more dangerous in some sense. And so to... Uh, to alleviate this issue, an idea that we had was to section off parts of this map, divide it into three areas, have the enemies only patrol in those areas, their own local area, so that perhaps if a reaction occurs on some place far away, if your region doesn't overlap, you don't care, you continue patrolling. And a way that we can do this is this repeated breadth first traversal technique, where you first first pick a node at random on the map, and we breadth first search out, which gives us a point farthest away from that initial choice. And now we have two centers of regions, essentially. Breadth first search out once more, and we get a third point. This can be repeated at nauseum, of course. We get a third point, and once we breadth first search out a third time, we get three regions. Really neat. And so uh, essentially, this behaves exactly as the previous option, or a previous method, except now they only patrol in their own regions. Pretty straightforward. And it does resolve this reaction issue. So here I bring the player character within sight of this enemy, and it locally increases... Oh, let me pause this. It's quite distracting. Uh, and so it increases the heat map around that character, of course, and the other enemies continue patrolling. 
as usual. And they will it, continue to do that until there is overlap with their region. So we'll see, even though the character is lost, uh, this character starts patrolling to where the player character used to be, was last seen. And once again, you'd hope that this would work well. And it, 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 actually, it actually works okay. I'm not, it, it, it works decently. The, the win rate does go down a tiny bit. And the mean score, you could say it goes down, but that might truly be random variance. But essentially, the main problem of this is that these regions have no guarantee of quality. When we have these, depending on that initial choice, that initial node, uh, these regions might have pickups far on the edges of their regions. They might be weird shapes, might be kind of odd areas in comparison to each other, even though they're equiradial, of course, pairwise. Um, and so rather than doing random center initially, you can do pickups. You can center on the pickups. These are the objectives that the player is going to. It makes sense to, makes sense to use them. And so you pick, we pick the triplet with greatest distance. Uh, it, it, you get a Voronoi diagram, essentially, with these, th these three pickups being the sites, and the cells give you the regions. It's pretty good. It's the exact same algorithm. And the, the regions are more natural in some sense. In some intuitive sense, it's more natural to have the pickups in the interior, and the regions, they look nicer. They seem like something a human might section off in some sense. And this does way better. Win rate gets slashed to the best of any of the methods to 9%, and the mean score gets brought down quite a significant amount, to be honest. So in comparison with the uh, first method, that's standard in the video game industry, essentially, uh, we managed to take the mean score down quite significantly, and the win rate. And uh, it kind of, as an aside, it's kind of interesting. That mean score almost approaches the, the trivial solution of just placing an enemy at a pickup each, because then you guarantee a score of three on every run. So quite interesting. And so yeah, that's it, essentially. Yeah, this, this is of course one of the main concerns for in the video game industry. You want it to be cheap, right? But this doesn't have to be done every tick, every frame. It can be done quite sparingly, to be honest. You, don't have, you can do it every few frames, in fact. And these algorithms are super cheap. The ray casting could be somewhat intensive, but in, in most engines, it's actually surprisingly cheap. The, the ray casting can actually be replaced by a angle restricted breadth first search if you really wanted it to be. There are some weird edge cases with uh, having to deal with corners and such, but they are really cheap. And the graph, uh, in this case, is like a thousand nodes. It's really quite small in like a data science sense. And so it, it's not very intensive at all, to be honest. I, I, I had another, I forgot what I was going to say, to be honest. I had another uh, response to that, but I've forgotten. <laughs>